Apple CFO sold $16.9 million worth of shares right here on this day of 17th of August, 2022, which happens to be the top of this rally so far. Now, could it go higher? Yes, but I find it very interesting how this aligns with my channel I've had here for many, many months. You can see the top of the channel here uh, that goes across as a resistance. It happened right on the day uh, that we touched that resistance or were very close to it. This was predetermined that he would be selling these shares, so it wasn't like he just randomly sold them uh, at the top of this move, but I find it funny how it did converge with this channel here. Uh, and it's very interesting because that was about like 45% of his share in the company. So that's a very large chunk uh, that he's selling here. Uh, so it is interesting on Apple. And it also brings a point that we did have a rejection off of the top of this channel here, which is going to be a very key level going forward and is the big difference between if we were going to continue up and potentially touch all-time highs or if we got rejected and we're going to fall lower to at least the bottom of this channel coming up here. So I'm back from my break and I did notice that uh, we actually had some form of a corrective, uh, at least intermediate top on the SPY. Now, could it go higher? Yes, for sure. But very interesting to see here, we have a pennant. You can see the top of the pennant here, the blue and the bottom was the support of the pennant here. And um, we did have a major breakdown below this pennant uh, that we were trading within as we consolidated it. Now we're below here. So that leaves two scenarios, uh, two likely scenarios for Monday. So tomorrow, uh, the first one would be a gap up back into the pennant and all of the uh, Friday, all of the Friday daily candle would actually be bear bait. Uh, this would be baiting bears because you can see here we're below the pennant. Uh, so a lot of shorts like to get into it. The bears like to get antsy and think it's gonna go lower. Uh, but then if we had a gap up, right back up to roughly, let's see, 424, uh, give or take, this would actually be very very bullish if we were able to hold and we could probably continue higher and break out and continue up uh, even higher than where we were before. The other scenario is we actually have a gap down below my gray line here or gap down onto it uh, roughly 421 or lower and that would mean that we are going to get probably going to continue going lower here because first of all, we are under the pennant here and now we're under this other key level. Uh, so it's kind of going to continue lower to some point. Uh, I have a lot of other levels that it could fall to, which I'll share in this video today. But those are the two likely scenarios. Now I'm not going to say, oh, I called it because we had a gap up here. I'm giving you two scenarios that to prep for. Uh, I don't know which one's going to hit. Uh, I can't predict that. I'm just giving you something to look for uh, for Monday because these are the likely scenarios that I see based on my experience. Uh, so you have to kind of look for that. Uh, another thing that I do want to talk about today is we do have the very, very uh, pivotal uh, Jackson Hole meeting on Wednesday. That's going to provide a lot of volatility and that's also something you need to be careful of because we tend to see, this is going to act as a FOMC meeting, basically the same thing uh, in terms of how the market's going to take it. So if you have a huge red daily candle or each green daily candle that can be completely reversed by Thursday and Friday of this week. So you have to be very careful. Uh, the trend is not necessarily going to be your friend in this case, because it's going to be very volatile after that meeting as it has been in the past. And there's also a lot of other events that are coming up that you need to be careful of and will bring volatility. So in my opinion, between now and my turn day of September 9th, I expect there to be a lot of chop uh, with a very large range, so it's going to be very tradable. As a rough estimate, I'd say some form of, well, let's see here, 4,160 definitely needs to hold. This is the bottom of this now demand level. This was the supply level before, so 4,160 would need to hold if bulls want to continue up, at least stay above this range or potentially go higher, so that's a key pivot right there. And it also converges with this yellow line, uh, so if we go to the daily chart here, this yellow line is very pivotal. Um, it acted as a major resistance on on the way up and you can see here uh, this previously acted as a resistance and was the top pivot of this uh, big sell-off that we had here um, so this line's key. You can see the daily candle got rejected off of here, uh, but then we gapped up above and continued higher. So this is going to be like roughly 4,150 to 4,160. Very key range for bulls to want to hold. If that were to go, then the next level would be uh, right, roughly around like 4,120 because you can see here the gray uh, the gray lines here is actually a previous bear flag we were in. So the top here of the bear flag is the resistance and bottom is support. If we were to fall back under, especially on a weekly candle, this is not something I expect at least anytime soon. Uh, but if we were to fall under on a weekly candle or at least two daily candles below, that would be a fake breakout to the upside. 
and that is very, very, very bearish, and we are most definitely going to see at least the bottom of this bear flag most likely continue lower uh, than the bear flag actually goes, which that would be roughly around 3,900. Uh, so some key levels to watch here because if this yellow line goes, and I find it funny because you could see here on August 25th and August 26th, between that date, we actually have a perfect convergence of both of these lines. So we would we can see maybe we would hit around this uh, time, very far-fetched, but something to note if we were to hit around this time, this would act as a very key support slash resistance depending on the gap of that day. Something to look for maybe uh, right on your notes or chart that you have. Uh, but as of now, this this is acting as a demand zone here. Um, so we're going to want to have this thing hold for now, at least if you are a bull. Uh, but I expect chop, whether you're a bull or bear, I'm expecting chop going forward here until my turn date on September 9th, uh, which after that is going to be very, very pivotal for my personal short setups. We're most likely, we need to see at least for my short setups, uh, some move downs or uh, down moves after that, at least the week following that. Uh, we're going to have to start to see at least some form of a down move start uh, because if not, if we don't have that in the first like few weeks or so of September, then I'd probably have to cut my position because my position is mostly based off of time. Uh, there's a lot of, again, you, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions on how I get this day. Uh, I cannot share that in this video, but just know that this is a very key day uh, going forward. You could do whatever you want with that information. Okay, so if we go to um, actually on Friday, for SPY here, and I'm going to filter for over 1 million in premium. I want to see what big money is doing. Uh, you can see here our friends, the whales, uh, are back yet again. We saw a lot during the uh, morning here. We saw 7.9 million in premium, 2.7 million in premium. Uh, so we saw uh, around 11 million in premium uh, for the 410 and 404 strikes. Uh, now, this one had the 1021 expiration and 930 expiration, so we are out uh, over a month on both of these, but they did catch some form of a down move throughout the day. Uh, if you go to SP right here. Um, you can see we had a pretty big down day, 1.29% uh, uh, down. So they were able to become profitable. Uh, if you remember, these are the same people or most likely the same people that have been trying to short this as the rally has gone up and have had to push back their expirations and roll their expirations to a later date because they were getting squeezed out on the way up. Uh, so interesting to see they were able to nail uh, this downside move on the day. Maybe they're going to start, I don't know, getting it right again. I mean, they were right characteristically throughout all of this year. Literally, the only month they were wrong was July, it seemed at least, uh, was July because we continued to rally as they went short. Uh, so for the most part, they've been right. Uh, but interesting to also see, we saw 402 strikes get hit for the 916 expiration, and this was both of these were after hours. Uh, you can see here 406 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. This was after hours. So both of these are pretty hefty prints to have after hours. Maybe this means we will have uh, some form of weakness at the open on Monday, but these are close in expiration. We've seen characteristically a lot of these 1021 strikes or expirations you could see here uh, throughout the day and from like the past week or so. Uh, but these people are going for 916, so that's a lot closer in expiration. That's less than a month. And typically big money likes, at least they have this year, likes to go at least over a month in expiration uh, for these big prints that we're seeing here like the 7.9 million so this person's expecting some type of move pretty soon um, especially because they got it before the weekend here after hours so another thing to note uh, for monday maybe there's potential weakness that we'll see so two more things i want to talk about one of which is the dark pool levels uh, we saw 1.6 billion in premium on friday uh, for signature prints nothing crazy but also not small at the same time kind of like intermediate here uh, at this 427 level so if we go to spy's chart uh, i won't actually go to this one uh, you can see 427 remember signature prints are are delayed by 24 hours. This is universal. So this data is showing up to everybody uh, 24 hours late because they're off of European exchanges. Uh, so you can see here they were selling uh, most likely, at least it seems it's a sell right now up at this like 427 range the previous day. Um, we did end up selling off pr uh, afterwards. So on Friday here, uh, but again, 1.6 isn't anything super crazy. If we go to Thursday here, and you can see that this was 1.5, so pretty characteristic. This was also at 426. Uh, so we haven't seen any super big uh, signature print block. Uh, again, most of these are like within the 1 billion to 2, like 2.5 billion range. Nothing over 3 billion. Uh, 3 billion would be a little bit more eye-opening. Over 5 billion would be very, very, very interesting if we saw that. Uh, and that would be at least very eye-opening uh, if we saw something like that. Because I have referenced before, we saw a $9.2 billion print up here prior to this massive sell-off that we had afterwards, literally all the way from like 456 uh, to like the 360s. Uh, so I'd like to see something like that. And as I mentioned in videos, but uh, for the most part, we haven't seen anything super crazy, just uh, one to 
2.5 billion dollar prints. Uh, but going back to the 15 minute chart here, this is actually, so you saw the pennant that we had before, the blue lines that we had here. This pennant could actually be taken out uh, a little bit further and if you go here, this could actually make a larger form of a pennant and we could get rid of uh, this blue line here, which means that we're still within the larger uh, time frame of a pennant. So we broke below the one I showed you earlier. Uh, however, we now are in, within this larger one. So bears would want to have some form of a breakdown below this level. Uh, if not, then this thing would probably continue up and at least find a resistance around roughly 426, uh, depending on time because of the angle here. So 426, maybe if it goes to the end, it'd be roughly 425. Uh, but this is kind of the main pattern we're within right now to the 15 minute, uh, 15 minute to the hourly charts. Uh, at the moment. So something, a break in either direction is going to show some form of confirmation. Uh, be careful of bear bait. We've seen a lot of that. So if it kind of consolidates under here and then gaps up, that'd be big bear bait and we probably continue up higher. Uh, but for the most part, this is the key structure we're within right now. Uh, so do be careful of this and make sure you might mark this on your chart.